Hare Krishna. There is too much light, it's daylight savings time. So I'm going to have light tea lock. Hold on. I'm going to correct that. Pluck out some of the light. And um, sorry for being late. I tried to go online on my computer and internet was very slow. So here we are back on my phone for better or for worse. So I have to um, <clears throat> make another arrangement. This is disappointing that the internet is not stable. Isn't it? I'm, I live in the country, so they don't love us out here with proper internet. So I'm going to plug this in. I want to just make sure this works. Let me know. Oh, now you can hear me. Yeah. What about now? Yes? Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna You should be able to hear me now. Uh, Hare Krishna I just got to get a confirmation that you can hear me now. Now it's okay. Okay, I had... You know... Uh, I had used this for something else, and everything was not where it should be. Okay, so um, we did a program last night in my studio. So now, no sound or yes sound? Joe Termaya says no. Adriana says yes. <laughs> Joe Termaya, can you confirm? Yes, okay. So I just have to bring in the keyboard and we'll have a little cure time. Okay? Don't go away. Hare Krishna, we're coming. this a little backwards, but I think we can do it. Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari 
Hare Krishna. Kupijana Balaba Giri Bharadhari. Hare Ramo 
Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go Pramanandi. Let me just move this out of the way. Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashta Evotale Sunimate Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Tinamane Namaste Sharashati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvise Sasanyavati Paschati Destoy. So it's close enough in case I get inspired to sing a song in the middle of class. I have a new song. Maybe we'll see it later. Okay, so I have chosen a topic for today, which is very interesting. And this topic came up yesterday. We were some of the devotees from Krishna House came, and we were giving a class. And through the questions, um, a topic came up that is so beautiful. And I've touched on it before, but I haven't touched on it to a great extent. And I thought. We should talk about this because it is so helpful. Hold on, I have to plug in my phone. Okay, there's an obstacle course here. And this is a this is a this is a beautiful meditation. This topic, and the topic is that there's somebody who knows everything that wants you to be Krishna conscious and wants to help you be Krishna conscious and will give you all the help you need to be Krishna conscious if you know how to connect with that person. And if you know how to access that help, that's the topic for today. And that, that is such a beautiful thought because the exact opposite thought of that is Maya is very strong and I can't get out of Maya. And that is, that is a common thought devotees often have. Or circumstantially, uh, when things are difficult, sometimes we have that thought. So what is the beautiful thought that there is this person inside of me who is more than willing to help me, give me guidance, give me intelligence, give me inspiration, give me whatever I need to be Krishna conscious. And in fact, that person wants me to be Krishna conscious more than even I want to be Krishna conscious. So what more could you ask for? So then the discussion today, in today's class, centers on, focuses on, well, how do you access that guidance? And so... We had a very interesting discussion yesterday about something that maybe goes overlooked or maybe, you know, sometimes we understand something, but we don't think about it. And so we think we understand it well. We kind of have a cursory understanding, general understanding, but often the understanding is deeper. And so I want to take this a little deeper. One of the main ways we access the super soul for guidance is, number one, to acknowledge what the problem is, which sometimes is in itself a problem. We, we're not even aware of the problem. Or we're aware of the problem, but we, we don't want to focus on it because maybe we think it's difficult or we don't have to focus on it or it'll just go away on its own. So first, first step is there has to be awareness of what I need. And... We asked a question yesterday, which, which helps bring awareness, this awareness. And I'm going to ask you this question. And you can write this down. You, you can remember this question and think about it. It's a very interesting question. 
So it, it, it's a hypothetical question, of course. It would never happen, but it just it helps to ask the question. It gets us thinking. If, if Maya came to you and said, uh, Krishna asked me to ask you, for me to keep you in Maya, what do I need to do? And you tell Maya, well, if you want to keep me in Maya, this is what, <laughs> these are the best things to do. You should do this, you should, do, you should take this away, you should give me that, you should put this person in front of me because I'll offend them. You should put this member of the opposite sex in front of me. You should dangle this bait of material wealth and success in front of me. Whatever is the bait. So Maya, Maya, Maya is asking you, in all honesty, tell me what your bait is. Of course, we don't have to use this analogy. We can just ask the question, what is your bait? What is the bait that if Maya puts in front of you, you you're finished or you, you're going to have difficulty? So once we know what the bait is, then we can begin accessing help from the super soul, if we want that help, assuming we do want that help. So how do we access the bait? Well, one of the best ways to access the bait is to talk about the problem, specifically talk about how this problem is affecting me, how this problem is um, detrimental to my Krishna consciousness, and and more importantly, what can I do so that this problem will not affect me? Excuse me, I have to turn something off. And one of the things you'll realize is that often we have problems and we don't talk about them. Uh, and maybe you'll also realize that we have problems and we don't even think about them. You know, how would you talk about them if you don't think about them? But sometimes we do think about them, but we don't talk about them. So discussion, discussion is how one of the best ways that Super Soul gives intelligence, gives guidance to you to how to deal with your problems. And I'm sure you all have this experience that you're 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 trying to work something out or you you're not feeling proper, and you start discussing, you know, this is how I feel, or this is what I'm thinking, and this is bewildering me. And you start discussing it, and as you discuss it, you start understanding it better, and you start understanding how to deal with it. And then you, your feelings about that, if the feelings were, if you had feelings that were causing you weakness, or causing you to um, go away from Krishna, your feelings start to change about it also. Because what happens is, is by discussing something, you go into the analytical process. And Prabhupada said the super soul is next to the intelligence. So it's like super soul is like, okay, I'll talk to your intelligence. Then with your intelligence, you can act properly. So the super soul gives intelligence. And that intelligence comes to us, believe it or not, by talking about the problem, by finding another devotee, talking about it, or writing about it, just journaling about it with yourself. This is the situation. This is how I'm feeling. This is why I'm being affected by it. This is whatever whatever you want to talk about. This is the need I think I'm trying to fulfill, etc. And this is what I need. how I need to be looking at it. This is how I need to be acting towards it. And you start discussing it. And as you discuss, you start to see Krishna is giving you intelligence to understand it. Now, I'm sure some of you do this sometimes. I'm sure some of you do it all the time. And I'm sure some of you hardly ever do it or never do it. But there is a problem in doing this. And one of the problems is I think a lot of us are not confident in our own knowledge. But we should understand, in this situation, we're not just talking about your own understanding. We're talking about accessing, through your sincerity and your desire, guidance from the super soul. And Krishna has promised to give us intelligence, and he will. So, uh, sometimes devotees are in this state of con uh, confusion about something, or they're bewildered about something, or they're, 
they're dealing with some anartha and they feel like I need to ask somebody else my questions, how to deal with this. And I don't want to say that in every situation that's not true. But I think we're, we over rely on other people to solve our problems when in fact we have the best solve, problem solver in our heart. And a lot of times I'll ask people, answer the question. They'll ask me a question and I say, you should answer it. And they'll write back and say, I don't have an answer. That is, that is because they haven't learned to think to enough for themselves. They've been always dependent on other people to answer their question. Uh, there, uh, there's a letter by Prabhupada said, he used this word independently thoughtful, and he said devotees should be independently thoughtful. So I think it's obvious because Prabhupada has given us so much instruction that the purpose of those instructions was not to be dependent on those instructions as much as it was to apply those instructions with intelligence. Of course, we can say, yes, I'm dependent on those instructions, but not dependent in a weak way, dependent to apply those according to my intelligence and and. If you study how Prabhupada ran ISKCON, he was always telling devotees uh, that Krishna will guide you. You're sincere, Krishna will guide you. He didn't, he didn't give a lot of practical instruction, at least not in the West. Some things, but in general, no. So he was counting on the super soul, guiding the sincere devotee. So... I think it's natural to feel that in the presence of superior Vaishnavas that um, I don't know how to think through my problems. But as you may have heard, Prabhupada said, every one of us has to fly our own airplane. It's time for heat. Today is cold this morning. So... I think there's a balance between both, a healthy balance that we're trying to create. So I, I definitely don't want to say, well, you know, you don't have to hear because Krishna will guide you. But it is a fact that Prabhupada said that the spiritual master is, is instructing you in a way so that you will be able to hear the super soul. And that, that's the ultimate goal of spiritual instruction, that you get this guidance. So it's, it's simultaneous. You're getting guidance so that you can get internal guidance. And obviously, sometimes we don't know answers to everything. We don't know how to um, free ourselves from certain anartas. We will need help. We will need guidance. But at the same time, that, that, that you should understand there's much more guidance within you that you may realize. And that's why discussing this subject is so important and so assuring that if I want to become Krishna conscious, there will always be guidance there. That person who is guiding me is with me all the time. So, what you will see is that if you're willing to look at a problem, an obstacle, whatever it is that, that needs your attention... If you um, if you're willing to look at that, if you're willing to look at the problem, and and willing to sit down and talk about it with another devotee, and just tell the devotee, um, I would just like you to listen to me. I want to I want to discuss this problem, and I want to I just need someone to listen so I can talk about it and try to figure it out. And you will see that generally, if not always. As you talk about it, what happens is you, you kind of, you'll see yourself elevating yourself from the position of illusion or emotion that is unhelpful or detrimental to the level of analysis, understanding the situation more clearly than you were before by talking about it. And you will start to discover things that perhaps you hadn't discovered before. You would start to discover things you didn't know that you knew. Like it was there, and Krishna's bringing it out now because you're discussing, you're looking at it. And this, this is how you 
you come to to see things on an intellectual level. So uh, last week, two things happened that that kind of inspired me to talk about this and clar- clarify this. Uh, one thing was a, a devotee who was a coach. He had read a book, and it, uh, the lady who wrote the book has at least 10 years of experience of coaching by letting people talk. And she said uh, amazing things happen. And, and the main thing she said was that I don't know everything they know about the situation, and I don't know everything they know about themselves. So often when they talk, the answers will be much more clear than when I talk. And of course, we know what's happening is the super soul, is giving guidance to everyone, because Krishna says that. Whatever, However you want to be guided, I'll, I'll give it to you. If it's, it's to make more money or become famous or go back to Godhead, whatever it is, I'll give it to you. And the other thing is that we were, were doing a, a course in London. And in the course, we have devotees who are counseling the students in the course. And, and some emotional issues came up. And so the, the coaches were asking, how do we deal with this? And one of the, the devotees doing it is a psychologist. And she said, often what we do in psychology is we get peop- when we get people to talk about the situation... It goes from feeling to in- intellect because if you're feeling something about a situation and that feeling is not helping you, if you can bring it up to analysis, then you see it from a different point a point of view and you see it without that feeling and then you can get clarity on it because if you see it through emotion, it, it's just you're just going to reinforce the problem. But if you see it through intelligence and discuss it, so she, through intelligence, she'll, she'll get them to discuss it, analyze it. So then it gets to the intellectual level, off the emotional level. And then they can see things more clearly and they can deal with it more clearly. Because, because a lot of times, um, the problems we have are we're being kind of pushed around by our emotions. Something happens, we get discouraged. Some devotee does something we didn't feel good about. Um, we become angry. Um, we become become attracted or addicted to something that's not helpful for our Krishna consciousness. So these are all emotions that we're dealing with. And these emotions are driving us. problem is, <clears throat> these kinds of emotions drive us away from Krishna. So that another time, uh, Prabhupada said, uh, not another time, one time Prabhupada said, Devotees are philosophers. And in the Bhagavad Gita, as you know, Krishna is saying the devotees are always parashparam. Amongst themselves, they're always discussing, they're always talking. So what's going on when devotees are talking and discussing? It's, it's all uplifting, it's all clarifying, it's all purifying. That's what happens when you discuss Krishna Kata. You get clarity, you, get, you become uplifted. And that is one of, as Prabhupada said, is one of the main businesses of devotees to talk about Krishna together, to discuss Krishna, to move forward. So this is one of the greatest weapons we have, either philosophical discussion, uh, uh, analysis, and or discussion, uh, realization of your obstacles, your problems, and finding someone who's willing to listen to you so you can discuss it, or if writing is better for you, you think better by writing, writing about it. Just, this is the problem. How? What is the problem? Why do I have this problem? How can I deal with it? And one, one of the things that you'll often realize, especially if the problem is deep-rooted, persistent, you had it over years, is that if you don't do something about it, if you don't really work on it, focus on it, have some laser focus on it, it normally doesn't just go away. It may, slowly, slowly, you may reduce the intensity of the problem. But often what happens is it comes back because you haven't rooted it out yet. And it comes sometimes comes back with more ferocity. Is that a word? What's the word I'm looking for? Ferociously. Ferocity? Is that a word? 
I have to ask non-English speaking people if that's a word because they know English better than I do. It comes back it comes back sometimes stronger. So if we neglect something, then you know it's festering and it, it's like um, here in, and in many places in the world, in the winter, the grass turns yellow, or some plants look like they they die, and when spring comes, everything turns green again. So sometimes it may look like you're an arthas or turning yellow, and you think everything's fine, and then the springtime comes, and oh my God, I thought I was over this. Um, don't assume necessarily you're over it if you haven't really, if you're not really working on it. Analyzing it, thinking about it, dissecting it, facing it. And this is very, very important. So I'm going to take some questions. That was the, the basic thing I wanted to share. That um, you know, this idea of you know, if Maya said, "How can I get you?" and you said, "Well, if you really want to get me A, B, and C, you need to be talking about A, B, and C. You really need to be thinking about A, B, and C, analyzing it, and." and making plans how to deal with it. And one of the best ways to do that is just find a, a confidential associate and just say, I just want to, I just need you to listen and I want to talk about this problem or, or any number of problems and let's see where that goes. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can all try it. And this could become, or should become, a regular practice. That When you're dealing with difficulties, even if they're big or even if they're small, Discuss them, analyze them. It's really, it's really transcendental warfare. Okay, so I'm going to go back, and we have some question. I'm going to go back to the top, but I don't think there's. When you're all telling me I can't hear you, and I can't hear you telling me you can't hear me, but I could read it, so we solve that problem. I just got invited to Mexico. <laughs> Can we fly around the world now? Akush says, I feel some of us do not know how to take the most of the association since we are busy doing Prajalpa. <laughs> how to advance yourself from such situation. Um. <laughs> well, generally... Well, why don't we make the answer simple, Ankush? Find somebody who you can talk about Krishna with. And if people don't want to talk about Krishna, then maybe those people are not your people. It's as simple as that. Now, I think the bigger problem would be that I may not want to talk about Krishna. I may want to talk about other things. And I may relish that. So then, you know, the blind follow the blind, and they both fall in the ditch. So that's a problem. But at least understand that associate, you know, association doesn't mean that you just associate with the devotee. You know, okay, let's go out and, you know, play football, you know. We'll play football with the devotees. We'll have good association. You know, let's get all the devotees together. We'll go, we'll go to the concert and we'll see. You know, whatever band's playing. Association. Do it in association. You know. That's <laughs> that's not association. So association means where two devotees are hearing together, chanting together, discussing how to spread Krishna consciousness. That's association. But associating for just speaking mundane topics, that's not really what association is all about. We, we could say, you know, strictly speaking, we could say, well, I'm not really associating with devotees. Because, I mean, we're both devotees, but it's not technically what association is, right? Um, and you know from Nectar of Instruction what association is. One of those items is exchanging confidentially, but it's not exchanging 
discussion that's not in relation to Krishna, for sure. It's, it's discussing confidentially about Krishna consciousness. Of course, giving and receiving gifts, giving prasadam and receiving, that's also part of association. But that part of association where we're just talking about something that has absolutely no relation to anything that would help us become Krishna conscious or help us in our service, it's not really association. Naturally, you get together, there may be some small talk, you know, what's going on, what's happening here, you know, who's winning the election, you know, this, you know, for like three minutes, you know, that's, that's just normal. But if it's continual, then that's not association. So I would say it starts with you, Ankush. What do you want? And find the association that can inspire you. I would say for everybody that's necessary. Okay, where is... I hope that's okay. Christina says... When I feel about the su- what I feel about the subject is that even though I may be able to think and solve my problems, usually when being immersed in the problem helps to have somebody from the outside with a more pure wisdom to give me some focus. Yeah, I understand that totally. But I would suggest that you try what I said and see what happens and see if you can't get that same kind of objectivity because if it's actually Krishna who will guide you, who will guide you and give you intelligence, then that is objectivity because it's no longer you. Now, it, it may be true that some of us Maybe we can't discuss the problem deeply enough, but just keep talking. Don't give up. Just, you know, when you think you've said everything, just ask yourself, okay, what else could I say? What else am I thinking about this? If you keep going, you will be surprised, if not shocked, at what you could realize. So then after you do that, if you feel that I really, I really need more help, Certainly, other people can help you. There's no question. But I think you'll you'll understand or you'll realize that um, you 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 have you have this facility within you who can help you tremendously. So that that's the point. So it's not it's not to obliviate anyone else's help, but often, 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 you won't need it. And a lot of times, Christina, sometimes, not a lot of times, but sometimes you may realize, actually, I knew the answer, but maybe I I was avoiding it or afraid to acknowledge it. That's possible. Or maybe I didn't understand the problem well, and when I started talking about it, I understood it better, then I came up with solutions. So um, try it out. No, but it will, it will, yeah, talking about it will clear things up, but it, it, it will also give you insight and help you solve it. Mm. So Christina says, I've seen times devotees expecting someone to give a solution to a problem just because it is easier to not be responsible. Yeah, that's true. Not responsible for the consequence, but, but not responsible to, to figure it out in yourself. That should be avoided, I think. One thing is guidance other than solving. Yeah, there's different. You know, sometimes, and people are trained as counselors. They're often trained to listen so people can talk about their problems. And sometimes they'll ask, when the person is like finished, you say, do you want me to say anything? Like, I, they want to know if the person's satisfied or not. So they don't, they're not always overly anxious to go further. And just because you haven't solved the problem in the first conversation doesn't mean you won't solve it in another conversation. And if you can do this, Christina, that then it's like the whole new world opens where you realize I have 
There's so many things, so many problems I can get insight into that I didn't think I could actually solve them. There's so many problems I could solve. Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam. Don't, don't forget that verse. I give intelligence. Tadami Buddha Yogam Yena Mam Upayantite by which they can come to me. That's Krishna's promise. I always tell devotees, when Krishna makes a promise, why don't you test it? Sometimes devotees don't believe the promise. So I say, well, test the promise. <laughs> Krishna says, Krishna says, I'll give you intelligence. Okay, test him out. Try it out. Pray for it. Pray for that intelligence. Pray for that guidance. See if it works. Kamalakshi says there's a Vaishnava, Vaishnavi journaling group through Sadvi Sangha. They send out weekly journaling prompts and also have three Zoom meetings a week for ladies to share confidentially whatever is on their mind. Fantastic. Uh, it's a great association. Yeah, so this is powerful. That is such a good idea. Uh, we should create more of those. Any any of you who want to create more of those groups, that would be fantastic. <clears throat> or m if we can share those questions, Kamalakshi, if anyone wants, if you're allowed to share the questions, anyone wants to see the questions, they could write you. How about when there are advanced devotees that give you advices that are not according to place, time, and circumstance? That's a problem. Can we ask more than one devotee in order to have a... Huh? Can we ask more than one devotee in order to have a more appropriate advice? And how can we realize that an answer is appropriate? This is an excellent question. It's a very sensitive issue, especially... Um, if the advice you've been given is coming from someone you're working with or from your spiritual master or your Siksha guru because you, um, you know, you want to follow them. There's a funny story that this god brother told me. They had just started the Gurukul in Dallas and he had a three-year-old daughter and he was driving Prabhupada somewhere. And Prabhupada said, so you're putting your daughter in Gurukula? She was three years old. And he just, he just said, uh, no, Prabhupada, uh, not yet. I'll wait until she's five or something like that. You know? So... You know, the implication was it was almost like advice Prabhupada was giving. So, what are you putting your daughter? Or why isn't she in school? And um, you know, the father you know, knew that that was too early. So, so sometimes you, you have to think that your spiritual master may be advising something, but ultimately expects you to make a decision based on your intelligence. Like, like, let's say I advised you to do something. but Maybe I didn't understand the circumstances. And maybe, or maybe it was just a general instruction, which was not meant to be applied in the same way for everyone. And so you're thinking, you know, okay, Mahatma Prabhu is giving me this instruction, and I know... Philosophically, it's the right instruction, but in my circumstance, it seems like it wouldn't be helpful. So that, that I think it would be sad if we had a movement in which using our intelligence was quote-unquote illegal or offensive or improper. Now, it is true that sometimes when we use our intelligence, we're not actually using our intelligence. We're using our unintelligence. So that can happen. But I think I think what you're discussing is so bright. You know, it's daylight saving, so it's it's actually lighter now. The sun is brighter now because it's sun's rising an hour earlier, so it's really bright in there. So um you know this is this is one one um 
Test the promise. Maybe we should make a t-shirt. Test Krishna's promises. Test Krishna's promise. That's a good t-shirt. Cons Krishna Kanta, I think you're here. Cr test Krishna's promises. Or something like that. You can send it to me and I'll maybe reword it. So I, um, I have often spoken to devotees who sincerely want to follow the orders of their superiors but the orders seemed difficult, impossible, impractical. Uh, the orders seemed that uh, the results wouldn't be desirable, etc. So they were confused. And then I've seen a lot of devotees, and this I think will answer your question a little bit, Jyotirmani, who did follow, even though they felt like uh, maybe my authority doesn't understand me, as well as I do, obviously, and maybe or maybe doesn't understand the situation like I understand it. But they wanted to follow, and they did it. And years later, they will tell you, "I regret having done that. I should I shouldn't have listened, not out of defiance or because I'm offensive, just because I understood with my intelligence this was the wrong thing to do." just as this devotee understood that it was not a good thing to put his daughter in Gurukul at the age of three. Even though it seemed that Prabhupada was suggesting it. So a lot of times Prabhupada did not tell devotees what to do, but he suggested. Knowing that most of us were not that surrendered, but also leaving a little leeway to make a decision. So then we have another situation, Jyotirmai, which is maybe an extension of this, which I've seen. And of course, what I'm talking about here are very general, and there are always exceptions. It's just a general idea of something I've seen. Some Sometimes you're told to do something, and it doesn't feel right. And, and so for us as devotees who we try to act on intelligence, and if something doesn't feel right, we, or many of us are kind of trained to not listen to feelings, but we should analyze intelligently. And that's good advice because sometimes our feelings are very off. But you know sometimes you have a feeling about something and later on that feeling proves to be true. We call that intuition. That is Krishna just guiding us. You know, there's something wrong with this. I don't feel this is right. But sometimes you're in that situation and your authority is pushing you. Now you should do this. And you're feeling, this doesn't feel right. There's something wrong with this. Sometimes you can't even articulate what's wrong. It's just, I don't know, but it doesn't feel right. Something is fishy here. Or, you know, I... Uh, this happens um, not irregularly. And many times devotees will say the same thing. I didn't, li you know, my authority wanted me to do this, but I had intuition it wasn't going to work, and I didn't listen. Oh, my God. It's so bright. I'm going to have to close the curtain. Let's see what happens if I close the curtains. Okay. You can still see me. That's amazing. Curtain is closed and you still see me. Okay. So, like I said, it's a, it's a general principle. At least something to consider that sometimes you, you know who you are and you know yourself and you know the situation better than maybe those giving instruction. So, you know, let's say you say, but what if it's my spiritual master? Then... But if if I had a disciple and they were in that situation, I would want them to tell me. Say, you know, you know, you asked me to do this, but if I do this, then that, or I, I think if I do this, then that, then I would say, okay, let's discuss it. Or I would just say, oh, I didn't know. Okay, what you say makes sense. Or if I don't think it makes sense, I'll say, I would say, well, let's discuss it. And maybe you, you'll show me how it makes sense, or I show you how my instruction makes sense. I think that's that's the way we want to 
uh, run a mature society, not just with your guru, but with any authority. So um, it's a volunteer move. It's a voluntary movement. Volunteer. It's a volunteer movement. <clears throat> so many times, Prabhupada said, you know, to leaders, you can't force devotees to do anything because they're volunteers, but you have to inspire them. So generally, a good leader will not give an instruction that would would not be right for you, but occasionally it happens just because they don't know the situation. And um, specifically, it can happen with a spiritual master because he's not in your temple and he's not, he doesn't know everything. He could be around the world and he's giving you a general instruction, may not apply. So these are, these are things to just consider. I'm not saying absolutely every time you have an intuition, it's correct. Or every time you think the instruction you've been you've been given is not good. That it's true, it's not good, but it's not offensive to question, because you feel, by use of your intelligence or just your intuition, that something else would be better. Otherwise, if we don't do that, well, we have a, we basically have a cult, and we basically would have a cult. You just, I'm the dictator. You do what I say. I'm the leader, and don't you know? That's it. So we don't want we don't want to create that situation. Um, so maybe I can summarize that and say if you if you feel or think an answer is not appropriate, just discuss it. This is what I feel, this is what I'm thinking, that if I do this it wouldn't be good for these reasons. Can we discuss it? And if the authority says, no, we can't discuss it, then that's another question. <laughs> what to do then? <laughs> you know, uh, you I think, Jyotirmaya, eventually you'll always do what you feel is best in the situation, no matter what someone has told you. You may not do it initially, but eventually. And as you age in Krishna consciousness, more and more you'll, you'll do what you feel is best because you have experience and you're, you know from experience that, okay, maybe this is not the best thing, but for me it's the best thing. You know that. And, and someone says, well, how do you know if what you're thinking is best? Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes your authority may not even know. Sometimes all you know is that it seems like this is the best and you do it and you see the consequence and you have to be detached enough to realize maybe you were wrong. And sometimes you won't know until you do it. It's just a fact. You won't know you were wrong until you execute that instruction. There's an interesting conversation where devotee was asking Prabhupada a question about what she should do. And Prabhupada said, do you want me to tell you what to do? Or do you want me just to give some general advice? Another meaning, in, in, in other words, meaning, this is what I think is best, but do, you know, you decide. So that's interesting, isn't it? He, I guess he, he was reading her kind of like, she just wants some advice to consider and then she'll do what she wants or does she want an instruction? So he was acknowledging that different devotees will want different things. Some will want an instruction and some will just want general advice to consider. So the Prabhupada was detached enough that he could do that with his disciples. That he, he didn't have to dictate what they do, but sometimes could advise, okay, this would be best. Now, there's another time, you probably know this situation, where a devotee, he was asking Prabhupada if he could remarry, but the way the word, the way the letter was worded, it looked like it was already happening. The process was moving forward. 
or it looked like that that's what he was going to do. And so Prabhupada said, you can do it. Just as Prabhupada let sannyasis give up their sannyas because, well, they already did it or they were in the process of doing it. So what could he do? So he just accepted it. Okay, they can't do it and so it'll be better that they're married. It's not the standard, of course, but he, he adjusted to it. So sometimes we can't follow the ideal instruction because we're not there. So we're actually doing something we shouldn't do, but that doing something we shouldn't do becomes, in, the, in this relative environment, the best thing for us to do. So the sannyasi gets married. He shouldn't do that. But for some, that was what they needed to do. And they did it, and they stayed in Krishna consciousness, and we have many, I don't know many, but we have, we have some very nice devotees who are married for the last 20, 30 years, who were sannyasis when they were younger. And that was the best thing for them to do, although it was the wrong thing for them to do, it was the best thing. So when the wrong thing becomes the best thing, that's... Maybe that's the name of today's class. No, that was only one topic in today's class, but that's the name of this answer. When the wrong thing becomes the best thing. So I hope that answered the question, not too ambival ambivalently. But sometimes I have to be a little ambivalent because I'm not dealing with a specific situation. So it's general instruction. Shravaniya from Poland, all the way from Poland. We have two poles in this class. Amazing. Maybe more than two poles. I don't know. I often find journaling very helpful in finding out what my problem is, especially when I am alone. Recently I started the practice of sitting or lying down, breathing to calm myself, and asking The question, what I really need, I found it very helpful. I also read Prabhupada's books in the mood of finding answers. I always find them. Or listening to classes in the same mood. Or I discuss with my husband. As some of you know, in the workshops I do, uh, a lot of the exercises are just questions we're asking you to discuss with a partner or asking you to write answers. So it's the same process. And um, a lot of, you know, a lot of things have come out of the workshops that you didn't really know before about yourself. And right now we're doing a, doing a workshop with um, mostly people who are new to Krishna consciousness. And we're doing the same thing. And we're also asking them, once they understand the situation, how could they apply how could they apply in their life? How could they live their life in a way that would help them overcome the problem? So this is this is very important. Once you get the answer, application if it is everything. Because if you don't apply it, then what's the good of the answer if you don't apply it? So yeah, this is a process. Do we get association of devotees based on our desires and mode of nature we are in? You could say, in a sense, in some, to some degree, based on your desire, for sure. You, what are you saying, Ankush? You, got, you get all the brahmacharis who like to talk pajapa because you have bad karma. <laughs> so what I would say, Ankush, is just seek out the best association you can seek out. And then you'll get it. And it's not like, do I deserve good association? Maybe I'm so sinful I deserve all the pajalp, pajalpsters. I always end up with the pajalpsters because I must have committed so many sins in my past life. No, it's not like that. Just find good association and get it. It's the pajalpsters. It sounds like a TV show. Actually, every TV show is just the pajalpsters. The Pajalpsters in different uh, different flavors of Pajalpa. 
Yeah. You know, if Donald Trump loses the election, I don't know what Americans are going to be talking about. They have nothing to talk about. Maybe they'll just talk about Krishna. Because since he was the president, it's been like, he's been like, you know, there's been more Trump kata than Hare Krishna movement has Krishna kata. And all the comedians had a heyday. So now I don't know what everyone's going to do. They'll just get bored. Maybe we need to reelect him just, you know, for entertainment's sake. So, Sri Radha Devi Dasi, all the way from Denver, Colorado, says, oh, it's early in Denver. What I've also found for myself is first acknowledge my feelings and bringing those up. Because if I first go to analysis of my situation and skip the feelings part, those feelings usually get stuck. Stuck. To go back, um, I usually get st- those feelings get stuck in me, and try to I try to bypass them, and they end up back up sometime later. Uh, on when I thought I solved my problem, it also you know. It's also you know it's funny to analyze your feelings, but. By feeling your feelings, you actually analyze them without analyzing them. <laughs> it's just the way it works. And it's also, you know, it's also interesting, like, why do I feel like this? You know, I'm feeling discouraged by a situation or this or that. And just to understand why I feel that way, sometimes it's so enlightening. Because when you realize why I feel that way, you know, because I have this need for things to happen this way or that way, and when they don't, then you realize, okay, yeah, well, this need is it's at the it's at the base of this feeling of that I'm getting discouraged. And if I have different needs or I look at these needs in different ways, maybe I won't get discouraged by the same situation. So sometimes you can't even understand your feelings if you don't feel them. I found sometimes I need to act to realize because my analysis just isn't clear enough. I need to experience my action to understand better in safer situations, not to necessarily act in a situation that is on the unsafe side. All right. I want you to do an experiment, Sri Radha. Do what we said. Take a problem and tell your husband, I have some masking tape. I would like you to put it on your mouth and just go like this and don't say anything and just let me talk. Train him up, Sri Radha. And then um, just talk and see what happens. Like, like, and then tell him, I need your undivided attention. I need you to promise me that you will listen. This is all, I just want you to vow, just to listen and don't say anything. Because most of us have never been in an environment where someone's just listening and not saying anything. Or, we're, or you know, we're talking about our problem, but we're, whatever, self-conscious. Or, so, you have to test this out, Sri Radha, and then you can tell me, Sri Radha, and then you can tell me how it goes. Um, I don't want to in any way undermine what you're saying because I agree with what you're saying, but I'd like, because you said it, I would like you to try this. You know, if it's not your husband, some other person, but they just listen, they don't do anything. They just say, I will give you my attention, That's, and I won't say anything. And see how that affects you. Um, I'd be interested in finding out if that is any different than your past experience. Uh, Christina says, we have many Christinas, we have many Katerinas, we have many Marias. Seems like if you're in South America, somewhere in your name is a Maria. And if you're... um, it's funny, we have Nadia's also. So somehow these names, these names, you find them in Russia and you find them in South America, they're the same name. Yeah, that's really fun. You'll get Christina's all over, South America, Eastern Europe. I've also seen some devotees, which training in Krishna consciousness was very much focused in covering problems, not speaking, just not thinking, let it go. My husband is one example. <laughs> He's a boy. He must have been a bona fide brahmachari. Yeah. 
rough, rough and tough. Fifteen, yeah, fifteen years as a brahmachari, yeah. Brahmachari training, you know. See, here's the problem. Here's a problem. You're taking a man who's, you know, never even heard the word celibate before. And then he's joining the Brahmacharya ashram and he's becoming celibate. And there's all kinds of <laughs> strange ways he may try to do that if he's not natu- you know, if he's not very sattvic. And so, you know, it, a man trying to be celibate and if he has a feeling for a woman, it's just like, that's like, what could be worse than that? So he's just like, <laughs> pretends it's not there or whatever, spits on the woman or something. So, you know... There are many unhealthy ways to be detached. And so many brahmacharis were trained in unhealthy ways, you know, to hate the object of attachment. It's unfortunate. And to shut down their feelings, because if you feel it, you know, say, here's a beautiful woman, I don't want to feel anything, because if I feel anything, I'll just want to give up my brahmachari. But that's not true. It's just an acknowledgement of how you feel. It doesn't mean you have to do anything about it doesn't necessarily mean you want to get married or anything. It's just, this is, right now, this is how I'm feeling. So now I know this is real. I, I, need, I need to do something, you know. I'm not the greatest brahmachari. Um, covering problems, yeah, it doesn't work. If you transcend, if you purify, it works. But if, if the problems are there and you pretend they're not, that obviously doesn't work. I just I just heard something unfortunate again. I had mentioned a few, maybe two weeks ago, that there were a few crazy brahmacharis that would actually spit on women, like female devotees. And I thought that was an isolated incident, but it wasn't. It was. You know, I never saw it personally. I only saw one devotee. Um, if a woman was coming out of the door, he would go in the temple through the window just to not be near them. But <laughs> he was a bit fanatic, fanatical. Eccentric. He was eccentric by nature. Um, but then I found out this was not an isolated incident. And I, I, Could you imagine? Someone joins a religious movement and he learns... And what does he learn? He learns when he sees women, he should spit on them. Can you imagine what, how difficult the task we have in helping conditioned souls deal with their own desires? It's it's a it's a very, it's a very difficult and sensitive task, and much of the training that brahmacharis got just aggravated the problem rather than solved it, and oftentimes they brought that wrong mood into marriage and they had horrible marriages. So this is this is of serious consideration. And all I can say is if you <clears throat> see these things going on or you see the symptoms of them, you should talk to your leaders and say this is this is very unhealthy. And we, we know from the past, we've seen it. And this you know, this training uh, it has to be it has to be proper and mature and so forth. Test the promise. It does work. I've tried it a few times in my life. Yeah, you know, I usually give this answer, Shravani, when devotees say, you know, I have this fear that if I do this, Krishna won't protect me, this or that. And then I say, well, how do you know? <laughs> have you done it? <laughs> All right, test him. He says he will, you know, jump off, you know, jump off the, the mountain. He said he'll catch you, you know. But I don't know if he'll catch me. You'll know when you jump off. But what if he doesn't? Well... Well, if he doesn't, you'll be dead, so, you know, you'll go back to Godhead anyway. So it's a win-win, any way you look at it. But test him and see what happens. You'll be surprised. Or you'll be pleasantly surprised. I don't know if you'll be surprised, but you'll be pleased. Test the promise. Sounds like a Christian song. Pada Ananda has a question. How we will be sure 
that we are exactly under direction of Krishna because we don't know what is his transcendental plan according to, yeah. This is the same answer <clears throat> that Krishna's in your heart. So if you sincerely want to understand and sincerely pray and think about what's right, generally you see human beings are constructed in a way that when they are sincere, Krishna will guide them. Even they're not devotees, he'll give them. And Prabhupada said, in one place Prabhupada said that, he said sometimes that a scientist is trying to understand something, and it's trying and trying, and at some point Krishna just says, okay. <laughs> okay, here it is, I'll let you understand it. And then he understands it. Like Krishna gives it to him after trying. So if, if someone, you know, even if it's an atom bomb and it'll destroy the world, if that's really what they want, Krishna's not judging anybody. He's just giving them the intelligence. So, like we're saying, test it. Um, if you're not sure, he'll give you that guidance. Test him. See. And, you know, if it works, that'll, that'll be a, a major realization for you. Right? Um, so Kamakshi is telling us about this group of women. There, there's a meeting format and different facilitators for each meeting. The plan is that we can expand as needed. We are in the beginning. Stage is meeting almost two months. And we try to vary the times because we have ladies attending from all over the world. And this time we're not sharing the prompts outside. Okay. Any Vaishnavi who's interested, please contact me. We would love you to join. Oh, no. I'm not a Vaishnavi, but I'd love to join. Can I dress up like one? Then they, then they let me in. No. Oh, I wish I were a woman. That's so bad being a man. Ah. I see sometimes, this is from Christina, I see sometimes also people having difficulties in accepting the existence of problems. Some devotees had their training in a different way. We're looking at a problem <laughs> as a problem. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there, okay, there's truth to that in the sense that <clears throat> let's say the problem is really it's really not a problem you just think it is then we could say yeah you know just you know go in the kirtan and jump up and down and have some pakoras you'll be fine <clears throat> which usually is true right because the problem was just not really a problem they were just imagining it we've seen that before but if it is a problem, you're absolutely correct that it is a problem not to look at a problem. There's no question. And um, Christine, I think some people have been trained not to look at it, but I think some people are constituted to just like not face problems. It's painful. And it's something we all have to learn sooner or later that if we're going to progress in life, we have to have the courage to face ourselves. And because when we're talking about problems, we're, we're really talking about seeing ourselves in our worst. So we need that courage. And if we don't have it, then the problem festers and we are affected by it. And that's the real problem of not facing the problem. Sri Radha says, what I've also found is I can't also think Maya to be so deceptive and scary that I second guess myself. Is this my intelligence or Maya? No. Well, you'll know the answer by um, the result, but with the fact that you have the holy name in Srila Prabhupada's books and the devotee association, you have all the tools you need to understand how Maya is working on you. And um, with what we're suggesting here, discussing your problems, and you have, therefore, the tool of super soul to give you guidance, I don't think it's wrong to think that way. In fact, Prabhupada has really taught us to think that way, that, you know, Krishna is stronger than Maya, and that if you take shelter of Krishna, Maya cannot stop you, cannot 
stop you in the sense that maybe momentarily bewilder you, uh, but not stop you. That's how Prabhupada taught us. So that is the right way to think. And I think it's it's good that you brought this up <clears throat> because... I think this overly being overly codependent on others to solve our problems is a symptom that uh, we don't feel we can deal with Maya uh, on our own. Of course, we we we're not on our own per se because we're in the sangha, but still we're on our own because we have to fly our pl- airplane, and so the need or desire for someone else to fly our airplane is not healthy. And it's not our philosophy, although our philosophy could be interpreted that way, but it's not. So this is an important point. No, you, it's, not, it's not pride. And even, even you find um, this verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where the devotee says, Aham tarishami, I will cross over Duranta Puro Tomo. Duranta Puram Tomo. I will cross over the great Duranta, the, the endless ocean of ignorance. And so when reading this verse, the thought is, well, devotees don't generally have that kind of attitude. That seems like an arrogant attitude. I will conquer Maya, you know. And then we're thinking, yeah, the first person who says I will conquer Maya is the first person who will get entrapped by Maya. It's not, it's not a humble attitude. It's not the way we think. But this devotee is saying something different. But he explains why he's thinking this way. He said, no, I have confidence because I have the tools, I have the sangha. It's been done by others. I'm not the first one. So I'm following in the footsteps of people who did it, so I'm also confident I can do it. So his confidence is not arrogance, it's confidence in the process, confidence in the, in the saints and sadhus who left the example that he just needs to follow to be successful. Does that make sense? So... In that sense, this verse is telling us we should be confident because we have the process. And it would, in a sense, wrong not to be confident. Now you might say, well, you know, I'm not confident in myself and this or that. But whatever. You still have the process. And if you just follow it, it'll work. So then you can be confident you'll be successful. Sridhadha says, I need to be detached enough to make a mistake if I need to be, learn and not try to be the perfect devotee that I want to be. Well, Sridhadha, an interesting reality is that you will sometimes, sometimes you won't know if your decision is correct until you execute it, and if you fail, then you know, okay, that was the wrong decision. Now I know. Chalk it up to, what do we say? Chalk it up to experience. So sometimes in your life, there will, there will not be a way to know unless you actually do it. And if you fail, just remember this mantra, it's not failure, it's information. And so if you see it as information, You'll be okay with it. If you see it as failure, then you're then you're you're identifying that failure with your ego or your sense of self. That's where you run into trouble. But if you identify it with just as this is information on the path to accomplishing something, and not identify it with your core essence of who you are, quote unquote, I am a failure, then you're fine. And so if everyone who failed is a failure, we'd have a world of 100% failures. But everyone has failed. And, and some of the people who are most successful are the ones who have failed the most because they learned the most. And now that's why they're successful. So, what do you think about that? It is just information as long as you don't identify with the failure, with who you are. Quote, unquote, I'm a failure. No, you're not a failure. You just failed at this one project. That's only one thing in your life you failed at. It has no indication on your standing as a failure. And I, um, I would say, 
anyone who becomes a devotee is a success, you know, despite all their failures. You know, your failures and your attempts to correct yourself are all huge successes in my book. As long as you don't give up, keep going. I saw that Prabhupada just encouraged everyone as long as they kept going. He saw them as successes or uh, potentially successful. But, but it's still in the present moment, that's successful behavior. So that's important. You know, Prabhupada, fortunately, Prabhupada didn't see us like we often see ourselves. Sometimes uh, I remember feeling that I failed Prabhupada in some way. Maybe not completely, but I could have done better. And I feel a little guilty. And then I would think, I don't think Prabhupada feels the way I feel. It's, it's totally coming from me. It's not coming from him. It's just the way, you know, I would like to do better. But that's as good. I, I did as well as I could have. And unfortunately, I think it would have been better if I could have done better, but I didn't. Prabhupada is like, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm thinking, oh, I feel guilty. I should serve him more. All right, you might say the guilt is purifying, whatever. But my point is, a lot of what we're feeling is what we're feeling. It's not what Krishna's feeling. It's not what Prabhupada's feeling. And it would be better if we feel, if we can feel what they're feeling. It'll be healthier for us. Yeah, so Sri Radha is going to try and she's going to share with us. Think of what uh, John is saying. Yes, think of what it would be like if we were in America. Hear Krishna's name on the news. TV Kata fills us with stuff. Yeah, well, you know, if you live in India, well, you've been in India. Turn on the news, or turn on the TV, and there's some. Bhagavat Sapta going on. Someone's reciting Bhagavatam or Ramayana or something. That's what's so nice about India. Need to control the listening is important these days, at least for me. Yeah. It's a lot more to listen to. But just just think, you know, all of Prabhupada's lectures, all his morning walks, all his conversations, you can get them all in audio form right on your phone. I mean, that's like, what more could you ask for? And all his books, carrying around on a little phone, that's like... Psh- so amazing. So, Victoria says, a lot of people with mental illness coming to the movement. It is difficult to listen to them as they can talk for hours <laughs> about their problems. Any advice how to communicate with um, with them? I want to be nice, but it's just difficult and I don't know how to support them. Well, mental illness is a, if it's actual mental illness, yeah, that's a different it's a different situation, and they should be with professionals who can actually help them. Um, and it's a good good that you brought up this point because sometimes someone may say, "Could you listen to me?" And you say, "Okay," and then they talk about things that are which are really difficult for you to hear. And you could you can just tell them. Say, I'd really like to help you, but it's really difficult for me to listen to what you're saying. Because maybe it sounds like criticism of someone that's very dear to you. Or maybe it sounds like they're advocating something that's not Krishna conscious. Or trying to validate some sinful activity and, and, and it's too disruptive for you. Then you just have to tell them I can't hear. But, you know, with people who have mental illnesses or serious emotional issues, then the best service we can render them is to tell them to get help, professional help. It's not that we can't hear them and give them guidance and advice, but if there are certain problems they have that aren't solved, they'll, they'll always affect their Krishna consciousness and undermine it in some way. And most of us are not trained as counselors and psychologists. So if people have serious issues, we need to get them to people who can help them. We, of course, can give spiritual guidance. We may know something um, about psychology, and we can help maybe people in general. But people with serious traumas, 
emotional dysfunctions, mental illness. That's unless we're trained, we shouldn't venture in those areas. But put them in touch with the right people to help them. Now the problem is a lot of people like that feel like I shouldn't, I, I won't need it if I'm Krishna conscious. But that's not true, necessarily. Not that Krishna consciousness won't help, but depending on the disease, it may not be sufficient to help everything. Ankush says, Srima Bhagavatam says that when we have trouble or issues, we should be tolerant and just keep practicing our Krishna consciousness. Doesn't that make us mechanical as a devotee? And when we discuss with devotees, they say, you are not this body. <laughs> so some devotees are reluctant to ask about the issues. What is the best way to approach the problem? Well, discussing problems doesn't mean we're not being tolerant. Discussing the problems means you're trying to make a solution. In the interim, you're tolerating. Tolerating doesn't mean suppressing. It doesn't mean denying. Um, You're saying when we discuss with devotees, they say you're not the body. Um, so you're saying they don't want to hear about your issues. What is the best way to approach the problem? Well, don't approach it with them if they don't want to hear. Find someone who's willing to hear. If that's what you're asking. I'm not sure if I've got your question right, but if that's what you're asking, then... Naturally, you know... You you might tell somebody, you know, I have a problem, I want to discuss it with you. And they might say, Chant Hare Krishna. That's all you need, Prabhu. So obviously that's not the person you want to discuss it with. <laughs> so, you know, like-minded devotees, that's what you want. It's not failure, it's information. Uh, I believe Marco says, first we need a strong faith to think that Krishna will reveal himself to for us one day in some way. He's already doing it, though. Why faith? He's already doing it. You became a devotee. He guided you here. See if Krishna's presence of Krishna in and out of our hearts you need to be Krishnized. But the fact is that all the intelligence that you have that brings you to Krishna it's coming from him. He's already giving it. So, Shamanis says, I find it interesting. Whoa, it's, time is up. 20, 30 years ago, when asked how to distinguish the voice of our mind from the voice of Paramama, devotees would get the answer that was not possible for them at their level. Yeah, not possible directly to hear Paramama, but that he gives intelligence. Maybe that's our philosophy. And, um, you know, Prabhupada's always saying, Krishna will guide you, Krishna, you know. So, yeah, you know, I can't think, okay, Krishna, it seems like he's giving me this intelligence. You could discuss that with someone. You, do you think? Do you agree? It seems like he's giving me an intelligence. I say, yeah, I agree. I think he is. Or what about this? Um, but, I think to doubt our intuition, to doubt our intelligence, okay, to some degree, there's that in the back of our mind. You know, I could be completely wrong, of course. But to doubt it 100%, that's, that's, that's not what we're, that's not what Prabhupada is trying to create, a bunch of robots who don't think. He was trying to create people who or spiritually advanced enough that Krishna is inspiring and guiding them, and who can create, therefore create other people who will have the same process. And um, you can you can do this process with other devotees. You know, if if you know some devotee has a problem, say, Prabhu, um, I think it would really help if you talk to me about your problem. You know, and just so just listen, just show attention, and when they finish talking, say, "What else? What else can you say about that? Do you want to say something else? What else do you feel about that? What What else do you think about that?" And just get them going deeper and deeper, and see what happens. And you'll you'll see in front of your eyes. Wow, Krishna's just guiding this person. 
It's giving them so much intelligence. So that will be helpful for you just to be on the listening end. Um, it'll be a transcendental experience. Okay, we get to end now. I mean, I get to end. You want it to go forever, right? But uh, I have to work on something now. But it needs to be done soon. And so, it is our time to end class here. Tomorrow I have a meeting during class time, so it looks like the new schedule is, until further notice, Tuesdays there won't be classes. Because I have meetings on Tuesday. Our, our group, Subha, meets on Tuesdays mornings. But we'll resume Wednesday. And uh, Thursday, we're going to speak about Neurotam Das Thakur. I believe it's his appearance day. And that will be the Russian class. And then I think we're resuming classes Tuesday night in Spanish. Then, yes, we have Japa. Yapa. As they say in Spanish, Yapa. In uh, two and a half hours. A little less than two and a half. Two hours and 25 minutes. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Gijay Gopremanandi.